Well, what's going on guys? Alex here with 814 EDC and today I am ready to do my full review for you guys of the A Purvis Zerks. Now I promise this is the last video that you will see of me in this outfit. Um, you guys will be seeing this on Sunday, so happy Sunday. This is the first Sunday of NFL football season, so super, super pumped for that. Um, I'm a big Steeler fan. Uh, leave a comment down below if you guys are big NFL fans and what uh, teams you follow. Hopefully none of my followers are a Browns fan. Um, I might have some beef this season, but no, just just kidding. You know, let me know what teams you guys like. Um, football season is one of my favorite times of the year because, you know, and I'm a huge sports fanatic. You know, I love baseball. I'm a diehard Pirate fan. I'm a diehard Penguin fan. I love hockey. And I, I really enjoy NBA basketball too. I, I don't necessarily have a favorite team for that because there's no Pittsburgh based team. Um, but I really do enjoy watching NBA too. I'm a, I'm a huge basketball fan. And, you know, I love Penn State football and Steeler football. Um, and, but this is just one of my favorite times of the year because. I'm getting to watch two teams, Penn State and the Steelers, play, um, and it just makes the weekend so much fun, and it just means falls around the corner, and it just it's one of my favorite times of the year. So uh, that was a little off topic from the knife, but I just wanted to get you guys um, and talk to you guys about that. So definitely leave a comment down below, uh, even what college teams you guys root for. So, and again, hopefully there's no Ohio State fans in the in the audience, but if you guys are, I'm still gonna welcome you to watch me and be a supporter. So. Two thumbs up for or, uh, two thumbs up for you guys, but yeah. So this is the A Purvis Zerks, and I have definitely been surprised by this knife. Now, if you guys watch the unboxing of this, you would have seen and understood that. Oh, excuse me. I you know, drink some water. This is my fifth video in a row. And my voice is starting to get a little hoarse, and my throat's starting to hurt a little bit. I think this is the longest. I think the most I've done before is four. So this is my fifth video. So I'm trying to chuck through it for you guys and not sound repetitive and still sound like I am enjoying talking to my camera, which I am, of course. Um, but yeah, I've definitely been intrigued by this knife um, since I've gotten it. Uh, obviously, back to what I was saying, uh, I traded my Microtech UTX 85 um, for this knife and I traded it through a Facebook group. And if I'm gonna be honest, the reason I traded it is because I saw, well, for one, I wanted to, you know, it was, I had never experienced an A-Purvis blade before, so it would be cool for me to do that. I thought that was cool. Um, but the first thing that popped in my mind, if I'm going to be 100% transparent and 100% honest, is or was that this knife had more of a higher value than the Microtech did, um, especially with some of the things that this knife comes with. Uh, it just it, it made more sense to me to rather than selling the Microtech for cash just try this out and if I liked it you know I didn't even think about that I just thought about getting it in reviewing it and then selling it which spoiler alert I am I think I'm gonna sell this um, so I'm kind of going along with my original plan but it definitely I've definitely thought more about keeping it um, and whatnot because I have like I said, I've been genuinely surprised by this knife. Um, it's a really cool and interesting piece, and I I really do like it, but I just, I don't know. At the end of the day, I think it's a little bit too maybe fancy for me. I don't know. I just, I would just much rather sell it and get money out of it and put that back into knives that I will carry and new stuff that I can check out rather than this just sitting in my knife case and me carrying it, you know, I don't know once every two weeks or something like that. But just, I guess, jumping right into materials, um, this sports a black micarta scale with an inset fat carbon pivot collar. Um, this was directly made by A. Purvis or Adam um, himself, and this was auctioned off on his Instagram. So it comes, normally um, the Xerx comes with these type of scales, which this is a black titanium um, and it has this really cool milling pattern on it which I think is awesome um, I love how it feels and I love how it looks and normally both scales would be like that which this also comes with the other scale um, with the aluminum I'm trying to catch the light for you guys it has that milling on it um, which was cool that you got both I had not you know I haven't taken this knife apart or anything like that I have left the black micarta scale on there 
but I was super glad to see that you got the uh, black other piece of titanium scale. Um, now the guy I bought it from or traded with, um, he was the second owner of this. I think he bought it off the original winner of this knife. And this was a raffle done on Adam's Instagram. Um, I believe when he, the guy that I traded with it, um, he sent me a picture or a screenshot of it. And I think it was like 20 spots for $20. So I guess if you can think about that, it's a $400 knife. Um, and I just, I thought it was super cool that it has this black micarta scale, which I think looks very, very cool. It's, 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 it's a polished micarta, excuse me. Um, so it feels very, very smooth, and I think it's very well done. And the fat carbon pivot collar is like a tiger stripe almost. Um, but overall, I think the, the scale and the pivot collar look very, very cool. Um, switching over to the other side, like I said, this has a titanium, or it might be aluminum, I'm not sure. I, I haven't really looked into this knife that much. Um, I've just kind of gone off what I've can tell so this might be an aluminum scale I'm not 100% sure um, but I just I absolutely love the milling pattern on here it's just a little lines cut in there you do have this brass um, or bronze colored pivot collar and then the pocket clip is definitely kind of a, a fatter pocket clip uh, not a loop over style deep carry which I'm not a huge huge fan of um, I you know I I'd much rather have a deep carry pocket clip because like this much sticks up out of your pocket, which is okay. Um, you know, not my favorite, but it's not bad. I think the pot clip, it looks a little goofy to me with how fat it is. I like when pot clips are a little bit thinner. Um, but this is a frame lock, and there is a lock bar uh, insert in there, as you guys can tell. Um, and then this knife is numbered. I don't know if, I'm assuming the, you know, with just a normal black, like the blacked out version, um, this knife is 235 out of 240. You guys can see right there. And yeah, we'll get this open. Um, this is a flipper only knife. And it flips open very well. This action on here is very, very good. Um, and then you guys can see right here, this is a 20 CV blade. Right there, I'll try to show it in a better way. 20 CV, there you go. Come on, camera focus. There you go. And then there is the A Purvis logo right there. Now this blade is honestly, it's like an upswept kind of drop point. Um, it honestly reminds me of a Persian blade. Uh, and I'm not a huge fan of upswept blades, but I think that, you know, this looks good. It's definitely not my favorite blade shape, but I have grown to, you know, kind of admire this one and, and appreciate it. Um, there's no skeletonizing really at all because the one side is just a piece of micarta and then the, uh, the lock bar side has, actually there is a little bit, I couldn't see it from the light before, um, but there's three pockets milled in. And for being a, I think it's like a three and a half inch blade, so it's, it's a, to me that's on the larger side of knives. Um, it's, it's quite lightweight. Um, I think the micarta definitely adds um, to the function of that. Uh, there is a backspacer right here. But yeah, um, I think that's all for materials. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Oh, the, the blade, um, it's a flat, I believe it's a flat ground blade or it might be hollow. Uh, it might be hollow actually, because it's nice and it's relatively thin um, behind the edge. The uh, edge is super, super sharp still. I've only cut a little bit of paper with this knife and I will get to, you know, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, I think overall the knife is very handsome looking. It's definitely um, different. Um, it's, it's, to me, it's, it's fancy looking. I like, I like how it looks, but I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll try to wrap up why I'm wanting to sell this knife um, in my final sort of category that I talk about, but um, we'll jump right into action. And like I said, this is a flipper only knife. So you do have some jimping up here, which is nice. And as long as you aren't pressed down on the lock bar, um, this knife rockets out of there. And it is a frame lock. So the closing action is actually very, very good. Um, I have bitten myself plenty of times right on the cuticle of my nail, my thumbnail. Um, and I'm gonna try not to do that right now, but yeah, that, I mean, it comes firing right out of there. It's on bearings, so it just it functions very, very well. Um, the lock bar is very easy to uh, maneuver and manipulate. Uh, but most of the times it just falls and hits my thumb, and then I just shake it shut. 
Um, I definitely, you know, it's definitely, it can be a false shutter if you don't mind cutting yourself. Cause like I said, I definitely have, it's fallen and just nicked my nail um, plenty of times. Um, so this definitely has a good action on it, but most of the times, so I'm not cutting myself that often. Um, I just do falls, it hits my nail and then it just shuts. But very fun to play with, very fun to fidget with. Uh, the detent is pretty good on this knife. Um, I've been able to, you know, you can obviously fail it a few times if you really think about it, but for the most part, it just, it fires right out of there. There, I got to fail. There, I mean, it's, it's good. So, um, sometimes, I actually haven't had that many issues with uh, putting pressure on the lock bar. As you guys can see, I have my uh, middle finger kind of pressed down pretty hard on it. And now I can't do it, but if I let up a little bit, I still can't do it. There. I mean, so as long as you aren't like torqued down on it, it's going to come right out. Now, if I'm, if I'm a lefty using it, I have my thumb on the lock bar and it comes out. Um, but if I really push down hard, it's not going to come out. Let a little bit of pressure off. It fires right out. So. Um, action's very, very good. Like I said, this is on bearings. And I'm not normally a huge fan of flipper only knives. I like there to be like a hole or thumb studs or something. Just so it gives a little bit more of a variety. Um, but for flipper only knives, this thing is definitely, definitely cool. Definitely has a good action. Definitely fun to fidget with. There's definitely, you know, some fidget factor there. And I, for being my first day purpose uh, knives or knife, um, I don't know. I'm assuming that's how most of his actions are on knives like this, but it's to me it's a good action. So, jumping next into ergos, ergos are also something that pleasantly surprised me on this knife. Um, it's it's a bigger blade to me at least. Um, so you have a natural restriction point right here with the the flipper tab, and you have sort of an indent here and then another indent there. And then up top it's just nice and flat until you get to the back. Uh, the butt end of the knife um, but then up here you also have sort of a choil which I have found myself using once in a while if I'm doing like I haven't cut that much with this knife but if you're doing something more precise it's more of a landing pad than a choil uh, but you can definitely use your pointer finger and get up there and get a good grip on it there's jimping right there uh, and then yeah so with not using the uh, sort of choil thing here. Um, you just sort of land in behind this natural restriction point. And with the jimping and stuff, I can get a four fingered grip on here very, very well. Um, still a little bit of a knife hanging out right there. So it's not like it, you know, my hands fit it very well. And it's very comfortable. Um, my car is very well done. There's no hot spots. There's no, you know, super sharp jagged points. Um, the apocalypse, it's very, uh, not very proud of the knife. Um, so I can definitely feel what's there, but it's, it's bigger and flat. So it kind of, you know, falls into my hand a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very comfortable, very ergonomic, very friendly. I think, I mean, even when you're using that choil, you can still get a good grip on here, but just, I, I was surprised. I, I don't know why, like I didn't, getting it in, I didn't think it was going to have a bad, um, you know, it wasn't going to be uncomfortable, but Kind of when I opened it and, you know, stuff, it just, it was like, dang, this, this knife's really comfortable to hold. Um, so yeah, ergos are good. Lastly is carry. And I've already said that this knife is a little bit bigger um, than some other knives. Like here is like the Eidolon, which it, it's just, it's just a bigger knife, but it's still, I'd say it's on the large end of medium or maybe even like the small end of large. Um, I don't, know, I don't get too many super big knives in so whenever I get a blade like this to me that's that's pretty uh, decent sized or big but carries pretty well uh, I would much prefer to have a loop over style deep carry clip just so it sinks down in my pocket more and just kind of disappears more but again with knives like this sometimes you don't get that and this pocket clip functions fine um, it's a little bit fatter than I would like to obviously like I said uh, but when you have it in the pocket, you know, there's the only thing you're going to hit on this side is the flipper tab. Um, there's a little bit of jimping on here, but most of the time my hand stays up here 
Um, and most, of my, most of the time whenever I have this knife in my pocket, the only thing that I carry in my front right pocket is my uh, phone. So I don't have to go in there like an inch to get my phone. So I'm never digging down deep on my pockets. And that uh, never catches on. But yeah, carries well. Uh, for being a decent sized knife, it has some good, you know, lightweight capabilities to it. I think because of that piece of my card, it helps with that. And there is some skeletonizing going on on the uh, uh, lock bar side. But yeah, carries well for the most part. Action's very good. Materials are all really, really well done. And that'll take me into my final category that I like to talk about, and that is price point and what I recommend this knife. So it's kind of hard for me to talk about price point because I uh, technically traded this knife, or traded for this knife for a knife that is lesser of, you know, it's worth less than this knife, I think. So when I bought the Microtech UTX-85, um, it was 250 with like $25 in taxes. So in that, I was in that knife for $275. I think that this is worth more than that. Um, I'm obviously going to find out whenever I try to sell it. But in my mind with, you know, these stock I think come from like 300 So with the extra scales and stuff like that, I think I should be able to get more than that out of it. Um, so hopefully I do with selling it. But we'll talk about kind of we'll, we'll go right around three hundred dollars for the knife itself um not including any of these you know the micarta scale or the fat carbon uh pivot collar i think it's a good knife um you know it has really good action in my mind uh, it's fun to play with it's definitely a unique design um not my most favorite blade shape but like i said it has grown on me um it's super comfortable in the hand um, better than i thought it would be uh, it just all around it's just a cool knife like I, I'm super glad that I took the chance to you know get this in um, because I like I said I've been surprised with it and I've I've thoroughly enjoyed having it like it's made me happy to have it um, and I, I think I would recommend it uh, me personally if I could go like I probably wouldn't spend that much money on it I'd probably go with different options and stuff like that but that's just me um, you know wanting to try other stuff I guess I kind of got lucky with trading it. Um, so I, I would recommend it, you know, if you have $300 laying around and you are wanting, you know, a, a cool, unique kind of knife, I would definitely categorize this in that category. Uh, but you're still getting really good materials. You're getting, you know, 20 CV, super good edge, a nice thin grind, um, very ergonomic, very comfortable. Um, if you just take off the micarta scale and put it with the normal, um, I want to say this is aluminum probably titanium I, I don't know um, what it would be I can't I can never tell the difference between the two because aluminum is very light and this feels like it could be aluminum but titanium also feels kind of light so I don't know um, but I definitely think the um, the milling pattern on these scales is super super rad super cool I'm trying to see you guys can get there we go um, but just adding that in with the coolness factor of the polished black micarta scale with the ape or uh fat carbon pivot collar that was made directly from Adam. Um, I think the coolness factor of this knife is definitely kind of through the roof. Um, it's just, it's super rad to me that I'm holding and having a knife that um, a maker specifically designed and made for the knife. I just think that's, you know, super cool. And I think that um, it's just, it's super rad, I guess. So I think the coolness factor of this knife is really, really high. Um, and then kind of driving into why I want to sell it to me the knife is just a little bit too nice to use um, and you know if I just had an unlimited knife budget obviously I would keep it I think everyone if they had an unlimited knife budget would keep every knife that they would have because they just can just spend more money to get more knives um, but to me I haven't carried it as much as I should since I've had it it is just sat for the most part in my knife case like I've carried it enough times to obviously have a good idea of you know if I like it and the materials on it and stuff like that but just to me it's a little bit too fancy looking of a knife for me um to have and I I just I don't want it to sit in my knife case um I'd much rather sell it get some good money out of it and then just turn around and put that money back into you know one two three knives for the channel um I have a few I have some stuff that I have been wanting that I would consider 
you know, turning, I would take the money from this and buy stuff like that, that I have, you know, have wanted for a while or I kind of have like a, a yearning to buy. So I think that's just at the end of the day, that's why I want to sell it. I just, I don't want it to sit in, you know, because technically in my mind, that's just 300 plus dollars just sitting in my knife case that, yeah, I carry every once in a while, but you know, is it really worth it for me carrying it every, you know, once or twice or carrying it once or twice a month? Um, not really. So that's just kind of why I've talked myself into, yeah, it's a really cool knife. Um, it's, it's definitely super rad and has a lot of cool factors to it, but if it's just sitting there, why not sell it to put more money into stuff? So I hope you guys can understand how I've portrayed that, uh, and whatnot, but yeah. At the end of the day, I'm super glad that I got to check this knife out. Uh, this was the A Purvis Zerks, which has a custom black polished micarta scale with an inset fat carbon pivot collar made by Adam himself. Um, super, super cool. And yeah, guys, I just, I'm glad I got to check it out, but I just would rather go to someone else's home that can appreciate it and they can enjoy it a little bit more than I can so and at the end of the day uh, I just want to make more content for you guys and there's so many knives out there that I want to check out and I want to get in to review and add to the collection um, and selling this will definitely help that along the way so that was my full review of the A Purvis Zerks like I just said uh, leave a comment down below if you guys have had any more of Adam's designs if you've had a Zerks um, let me know because I'm definitely new to his company um, I don't even like I can't even think of another model name that he has uh, in his lineup um, so maybe somewhere along the road if someone has some more of his uh, designs and stuff like that I would love to check them out just to you know get more of his design language under my belt and to learn more about them so um, definitely leave a comment down below if you guys have any of his designs, if you've had a Zerks, um, what your thoughts are and stuff like that. As always, I'd love to hear what you have to say. And yeah, I'll wrap up my rambling now. Um, I'm surprised my voice is still here. I've just, I've never recorded this many videos in a row before, so I have to pat myself on the back for that. And I hope they all came out well for you guys. Um, and you know, you can understand most of what I'm saying. So yeah, I'll wrap up what I'm saying, or I'll quit rambling. Um, thank you guys so much for stopping back in and for checking out my channel and for watching the videos. Your guys' support means so much to me and I just, I love you guys all. So thank you guys so much for uh, watching and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Sunday and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.